As web designers, we want users to be able to interact with our page. We want them to be informed by our website and then in some way interact. Without interactivity, a website would be very boring. One of the ways that you can add interactivity to your website is to create links. Links allow you to link to other HTML documents, either ones that are part of your site or other ones that are out on the World Wide Web. You create links by using the anchor element. We're going to create a link now. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to find some text inside of my paragraph and I'm going to turn that text into a link. We'll use these two words right here. What I do is I wrap the words that I want to be a link within the A tags. I'll open the link by creating an opening A tag and then here I have my closing A tag. I'm going to move my closing A tag so it's at the spot where I want the link to end. By wrapping the text with the A tag, this is identifying this bit of text as what will be the link. Now by default, if I save my page and we look at it in the browser, you can see that nothing has changed. We don't actually see the link. And that's because right now we've set the anchor element, but we haven't actually told it to have the link behavior. In order to make the A tag useful, we need to add an attribute. The attribute that we're looking for is the href attribute. href stands for hypertext reference, and it allows us to reference where our link is going. We're going to go ahead and we're going to create something called an absolute link. We're going to link out to another website on the World Wide Web. We do that by typing the entire web address. You must include the http colon forward slash forward slash and then you're going to put the name of the website. I'm going to have my link go to the Autobahn website. So I'm going to put in the entire URL. Don't forget that you'll always need to include the http colon forward slash forward slash and then the rest of the address. I'm going to save and if we go to the browser and we refresh, you'll now see that the text that we specified as a link now shows up and looks differently than the rest of the text. It's going to display in the browser as being blue and underlined, which is the default look for a link. If I hover over the text, you'll see that my mouse turns to the pointer finger and if I click this, my browser is going to then go to the website that I specified. So now I'm at the Autobahn website and I would be able to navigate on the Autobahn website and do whatever I need to do there. When I clicked the link, it took me to the Autobahn website. I no longer have my website open in the browser. In order to get back to my website, I would have to click the back button in the browser. So if I click the back button in the browser, it's going to take me back to my website. One thing worth noting here is you can see that the link color has changed to purple. The reason that the link color is now purple is this is how browsers by default display visited links. So once we've visited the link, the color is going to change to, from blue to purple. Let's change this behavior so that instead of navigating away from our website, it's going to open a new window or a new tab. If you want that to occur, you're going to use another attribute inside of the A tag. That attribute is going to be target. And if we want our page to open in a new browser window, we'll use the value of underscore blank. Now if I save my page and we go back to the browser and refresh, and now when I click on the link, if you watch up here in my browser, you can see that a new tab has now opened and now I can go to the Autobahn website. If I click any of the links and navigate through the Autobahn website, it's all going to be occurring in this separate tab. If I want to go back to my website, I can click the original tab and now I'm back on my original website. Usually when you make links that go to outside websites, you'll want to include that target and set it to underscore blank so that the user doesn't permanently leave your website. It'll open a new window or a new tab and they can navigate on the website that they're currently on but they can close the tab or go back to the window that contains your website. That is a more common way of making a link that goes to an outside website. These links that go to outside websites are referred to as absolute links. On the web, when we make links, we have two types of links. We have absolute paths and we have relative paths. For now, what I want you to know is that when you create a link to an outside website, you'll always be using that absolute path, which means you have to have the exact address of the website, starting with the HTTP and then including the rest of the address. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create 
a link around the text that says email us. We're going to turn this link into being a special type of link that will allow the user to send an email. Once again, I'm going to use an A tag and I'll use the href attribute just like we did in the last link. But because I want this to be an email link, I'm going to use mail to colon and then I'm going to put the email address that I want the user to be able to email to. So for here, we'll just use info at bw.com for birdwatchers.com. I'm going to put the angle bracket to close the opening portion of my A tag. Brackets automatically makes the closing A tag for me, but what I want to do is I want to move the closing A tag to the end of the text that I want to be a link. Remember we want the words email us to be a link. If I don't surround these words with the opening and closing A tags, then that text is not going to show up as a link. But if we save now and we go back to the browser and refresh, you'll see that now this text shows blue and I get the pointer finger if I hover over and if I click it, it goes ahead and launches my default email program and in the to field you can see that the email address that we specified has already been set. When you use the href attribute and use mail to colon and then immediately put the email address, it's easy to create email links. So in this exercise, you now know how to create email links and also links that will link to an outside website. Remember, these types of links are using the absolute path to the website. Once we've created some more pages for our website, we'll make some links so that we can navigate throughout the pages of our website. Currently, we just have this one page, so we need to create some additional pages before we can do that. We'll do that in some of the upcoming videos.